kitty. Kitty, you gotta, I know, I know. You gotta get down, you gotta get down. I don't wanna touch you. Come on, come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're being really sweet, but I don't want, okay, there we go. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm showing you a recipe for pineapple upside down cake. And this is my spin on the classic. It will give you all the flavors of a classic pineapple upside down cake, but it has some brown butter and some sour cream and I use fresh pineapple. Flavor wise, it's going to take you back to childhood. And I make it in a skillet. So it's kind of like a one bowl, one skillet dessert. I make a lot of upside down cakes for a lot of reasons. One, I just love making cake. Two, it is like a type of dessert where the decoration is built in. You just flip it over and you get this beautiful surface. So I love that there's no extra decorating or adornment. And three, usually it incorporates fresh fruit. So these are like all things that I look for in desserts. This one you make in a skillet because it has this caramelized layer of pineapple that you bake on the bottom, you turn it over, then it becomes the top. I love pineapple as a fruit and when you cook it, it kind of gains a different texture and a different kind of flavor. And I really prefer to use fresh pineapple for the flavor and also to control the sweetness. And my other twist is that I'm making a brown butter cake. I do have a version in Dessert Person that has this very like nutty pecan cake. This I think will give you that flavor of pineapple upside down cake, but it just has some upgrades like the brown butter, fresh pineapple. It is a sour cream based cake. So it has, it's very like tender and light and very tasty. I have, of course, fresh pineapple. And in that caramel layer, I have butter, brown sugar, rum, and kosher salt. In the cake itself, I have butter, which I'm going to brown, sour cream, eggs, all-purpose flour, a little cinnamon, more rum, vanilla extract, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and more light brown sugar. You could do this in a stand mixer. I'm gonna use a hand mixer. You do need something to help you cream together the butter and the sugar. That's gonna give the cake a light fluffy texture, but hand mixer or stand mixer is fine. And then I have a 10 inch skillet. So you'll need an oven safe skillet. That's important because you're gonna go from the stove top into the oven. So I'm gonna put aside all my ingredients for the cake part because that comes a little bit later. And I am going to make the pineapple caramelized layer on the bottom of the skillet. But before I do that in the same skillet, I'm gonna brown my butter because that has to cool off so I can make the cake part. For the entire cake, I have two sticks of butter. A half a stick is gonna go in my caramelized pineapple layer. The other stick and a half I'm going to brown, set aside, put in a bowl, and that's gonna cool off and be the base of our cake layer. So this is gonna go right into the skillet. I'm gonna turbo it, and we'll really go fast. That is fast. I know, it boils water so quickly. It is going to come to a boil as the water heats up and starts to cook off. You also wanna stir pretty continuously, scraping the bottom because those milk solids, which are made of proteins that naturally occur in the butter, can stick and then easily burn. So you kinda of wanna keep the mixture moving, both to prevent sputtering and to prevent sticking. It can take a while if you have a lot of butter in there and a, and a narrower vessel. So it might seem like nothing's happening for a while, but eventually it will brown. So just keep going and you don't want your heat to be too high because it can very easily overcook and then burn. So just keep an eye on it. And when it's, you start to notice golden browns bits, take it off the heat and let it finish cooking through carryover and sort of continue to darken a little bit. And then you can scrape it into a separate container. If you're to leave it in the vessel in which you cooked it, if you're not careful, it can really easily burn even when you take it off the heat. So once everything is kind of a medium golden brown, I'm gonna remove it from the heat. Bring it over here, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. When I scrape away the foam, you'll see those brown butter solids. So I like to stir it off the heat until I have a really deep, deeply browned mixture, and then I scrape it into a bowl. The skillet has just butter in it, that's great, because I'm gonna use it again. So this is going to just go off to the side and cool so that we can make our cake. So I'm going to start by cutting up my pineapple. There's a special like gadget for like coring pineapple, which I do not have. So I'm gonna show you how to do it the old fashioned way. I have a little ring cutter that's useful for cutting out the core. 
If you don't have a ring cutter, you could just use a little paring knife and cut a circle. So I'm gonna start by lopping off the stem end and the base crosswise to pick a pineapple, to tell if it's ripe. There should be a little bit of give. It should smell super pineapple-y when you give it a sniff. And then the leaves at the very top will easily pull out. This one's not that ripe, but it's the best I could do. And you can cut really generously because it has a very, very thick exterior. Then stand it up and just cut down and around the entire exterior following the contour of the fruit. And make sure you cut generously so that you take off the little eyes, which are these little circles that stud the whole exterior. Once you remove all of the skin, you can go back with a paring knife, it might be easier, and just cut off and kind of dig out any little eyes that are left. I'm gonna now lay it on its side and cut slices that are between a quarter and a half inch thick. And I just need eight slices for the cake, so if you have a little bit left over, which I probably will, just eat it. Just cut it up and eat it as a snack. What I'm doing is basically cutting slices that kind of look like the pineapple rings you get out of the can, because I still want the look of it. I'm gonna taste this pineapple. It's not bad at all. Pretty good actually. Pineapples have this thick fibrous core that runs straight through the fruit. So I'm gonna punch that out because it's just too tough to eat in the cake. So you just give it a little punch. And then you have this like classic pineapple from the can ring. So I'm gonna keep doing that to all the rest of the slices. I can leave this in a pile right here. Then I'm going to make my sugar mixture in my skillet. So for the caramelized layer, I'm gonna make this caramel mixture out of, oh my God. Now? Yeah. Now I get to do it now. Okay, oh yeah. my God. Today's the day, you guys. This is my first look at What's for Dessert, my new book, out November 8th. So I haven't seen it since this got sent to the printer in May. Oh my God, I almost panicked because it's wrapped. I almost panicked. I was like, this is not what we talked about for the cover. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at it. It's so pretty. Oh my God. I can't believe it's here. Oh my God. I incorporated feedback um, from dessert person, so the text is a little bit larger. That was, that was something I heard. I know, Archie. The chapter openers are stunning. Look at how beautiful this is. So all the chapter openers are these like big sort of party scenes of a bunch of recipes in the chapter. So this is easy cakes, pies, tarts, cobblers, and crisps. It's a great chapter. This is a s'mores tart. We'll make this. The last chapter goes super in depth and deep on all sorts of techniques with photos to explain everything. The Silky and Felix are in it. There's my Silky, my favorite is chicken, and there's Felix looking so handsome. So you can pre-order it now. You can go to the Penguin Random House website. We'll put the link below and you can find indies in your area that ha will stock it or anywhere books are sold. I love, love, love the cover. So excited about it. My skillet still has that butter residue in it, which is fine, because we're just gonna add more butter. So for the caramel layer, I have a half cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of dark rum. You can very easily omit the rum from this recipe if you wanna do alcohol-free. Just add a quarter cup of water, and that's it. A half a stick of butter. And then I'm also gonna add a generous pinch of salt. That helps to just kind of temper the sweetness of everything. What I wanna do here, before I add the pineapple, is cook this down. I wanna basically cook off all the moisture in that I added from the rum. I'm gonna cook it on medium high, and I just want it to reduce, darken a little bit, get really thick, and then I'll add the pineapple. You can agitate this constantly. That will help to prevent separation. But you can see how it's getting very thick, and when I drag the spatula through, it leaves a trail, and it, that takes a couple of seconds to fill in. Now it's getting a little bit darker, kind of starting to caramelize, it's really thick gonna add the pineapple. It's like a little fibrous, so I wanna get it nice and tender before I bake the cake. Just gonna throw these in here. You can see it's bubbling because that it's adding that liquid. We are just gonna let this cook down. I'll occasionally turn them. They are going to cook in that caramel mixture. They're gonna turn a little bit translucent, so that's sort of how you know that they're done. The, the pineapple will go from opaque yellow to translucent. That's how I know they're tender. And just so they cook evenly, I'll periodically turn them 
but that caramel mixture should kind of bubble up and over the pineapple. That took probably between five and 10 minutes. So I pulled the whole skillet off the heat. And when it was done, an indication that you're reduced enough and cooked enough is not only that the slices are translucent, but you'll notice that the pineapple, once it's given off its liquid, starts to stick a little bit to the bottom of the skillet. That's when everything is reduced to the right point. So I have this smooth kind of caramelly mixture in the bottom. And I want to let it cool so that I can put the batter on top. And I am just going to take this opportunity to arrange the slices in a pattern that I like. I want like nice full coverage of everything. So I'm going to arrange them. I have one smaller slice toward the center. I'm going to arrange all of them around it. Like the bottom of the skillet will become the top, obviously upside down. So you want pineapple everywhere in every slice. I will bake the cake in the skillet on the sheet tray just to catch any drips. So this will go over here. And I want it to cool not just so that it doesn't affect the texture of the cake batter, but I also want the bottom to solidify so that I, that caramel stays with the pineapple and gets into this like really gooey, delicious layer. I'm gonna start by mixing my dry ingredients. I have my flour here, this is one and two thirds cups. Then I'm going to add one and a quarter teaspoons baking powder, then one and a quarter teaspoons kosher salt. A teaspoon of ground cinnamon, that is the spice you will find in basically every upside down cake, every pineapple upside down cake. You could add any warm spices that you like. And then a half teaspoon of baking soda. So whisk all of that together to combine. Next, I'm going to do the wet ingredients. I have three quarters of a cup of sour cream. This is room temperature, that's important. Then I have three tablespoons of rum. So the rum is in the top pineapple layer. It's also in the cake. I love baking with rum. If you wanted to make this alcohol free, substitute three tablespoons milk for the three tablespoons of rum. And then a couple teaspoons of vanilla extract. So just mix that together. It doesn't have to be smooth, but you wanna incorporate it. My oven is on 350, so that's preheating. I have a rack in the center. So that's my liquid ingredients. And now I'm going to assemble the batter. So here I have, it is even just in that like minute or two, basically solidified, not entirely, but is room temperature. It doesn't have to be solid, but make sure it is opaque. That's how you know it's no longer hot. You just do not want to start the recipe with hot brown butter. If you want to speed up the cooling process, you can always put the bowl in an ice bath, meaning in a larger bowl filled about a quarter of the way with ice water, and then stir it around. Just don't let it get cold. You just want to take any heat away. So it's room temp. So to this, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar. And I always do brown sugar packed. I'm gonna cream this together. So I'm gonna start on low speed until combined, then increase the speed, and I wanna go until this is light and fluffy. And in a hand mixer, this can take several minutes. So try to be patient. Ah! Okay. So that's nice and light. My eggs, room temp. I'm gonna add them one at a time. I want this room temperature so that it doesn't harden the butter so I can maintain that fluffy texture. It's the same principle of like when you're adding, when you want something to blend into something else, it should be the same temp. Butter obviously is a temperature sensitive ingredient. So go ahead and beat that in really well. Now whether you're using a hand mixer or a stand mixer and you're making a cake, it's always important to give the bowl a thorough scrape. Then egg number two. Yeah, all the specks. I have this really beautiful, smooth, light mixture. And now I'm going to add my wet and dry ingredients. And you, you alternate starting and ending with dry. So that means I'm gonna start with about a third of dry ingredients. And just eyeball it. Mix on low, just to incorporate. And then with just a few streaks of flour remain, add half of the liquid, that sour cream and rum mixture. Again, just eyeballing it. Okay. I'm gonna scrape down the sides. Now half of the remaining or a third of the total flour mixture.
then all of the remaining sour cream mixture. Okay, then all of the remaining flour. So that's the batter. I always undermix a little bit at the end when I'm using an electric mixer. And then I finish mixing by hand. It just prevents overmixing so your cake is tender and not tough. You can see I have a lot of flour on the sides of the bowl. I just fold everything by hand. It's really common to have like pockets of unincorporated butter in the very bottom. So just make sure you don't have any of that. You want an evenly mixed batter. So let's cover the cake. It's warm, it's not hot. So I might pop this in the freezer just to speed up the cooling process so that I don't put it on a hot base and try to firm up some of that liquid in the bottom too. Ay, ay, ay. So I'm gonna gently dollop the batter over top and I have my offset spatula. So you wanna kinda gently like drape the batter over the pineapple and not get it on the sheet tray like I just did. What happens if it pools is the cake just kind of absorbs the liquid around the sides. I'm not gonna quite touch the edge, but I'm gonna go right up to it. Into my oven, 350. The cake will bake like 35 to 45. And I wanna go until golden brown across the top, spring to the center, and a cake tester comes out clean from the middle. I pulled the cake out of the oven. It went just shy of 35 minutes. So depending on your oven, you might want to start checking it around 30. So it's golden brown, springy in the center. You can see little cracks in the surface. So I let it cool for like 10 to 15 minutes in the pan. You want to give the juices a chance to firm up, but you don't want it to cool completely because then it will stick. So 15 minutes or so is good. So I'm just giving it a once around with the spatula to loosen any areas. So I'm going to invert it onto this rack. But is a bunch of juice going to I hope not. <sighs> Looks so good. Little, little bits of drips, but for the most part, everything is on the cake. I'm gonna grab my offset spatula, zhuzh it a little bit. Everything came out for the most part. I just have some little, little tiny areas of cake in the pan. So I'm gonna scrape those back on top. Gonna give it a little taste on the side. Mm. Those flavors of pineapple plus brown sugar plus rum is like really magical. And then I'm so excited to try the actual cake itself with all that brown butter. I'm gonna let this cool. So it should really cool for like probably at least an hour or so. And then we'll come back and slice it and try it. So very often with an upside down cake, especially ones with a lot of butter in that fruit layer, um, it can go kind of cloudy as it cools. This has stayed beautiful and glossy and wonderful. But if it does go cloudy, you can always strain like some apricot jam and do a little glaze on top. So I'll do that a lot of times just for looks um, on the final cake. No, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. I'm as excited for the fruit as I am for the brown butter cake. Because I just know like all those flavors of the rum and the brown butter and the pineapple are going to go together so well. Um, use a serrated knife that will help you get through the top layer. So you can see how cleanly I can slice through the pineapple, like the, the, the kind of fibrous, fibery layers just become really tender because of that pre-cooking. I love, it's so satisfying when you get like such a nice clean slice. So here you can see like it's quite a substantial layer of cake, even though it didn't seem like a ton of batter going on top of the fruit. It looks so good, I'm so excited to eat it. The cake is like super bouncy, nice crumb. Time to taste. I, I kind of want to taste just the cake first on its own. The pineapple is like a strong flavor. So I want to taste just the cake to kind of see how that turned out. I can, even in the baked cake, I can see the little flecks of brown butter, which I just, it's like signaling to my brain how tasty it's going to be. Mm. I love the rum flavor. Wow. The cake on its own is really good, but it wants, it's calling out for the pineapple. And you get the acid mixed with the brown sugar, plus that like undertone of the rum, holding everything together, it's, it's so delicious. And then all of those caramelly flavors blending from the topping into the cake. It's so good. And I love that we have a nice generous layer of pineapple so that every bite has pineapple and cake in it. This is exactly the kind of recipe I love showing you on Dessert Person because I feel like it really over delivers. Everything is made in a skillet. You just need a couple bowls. 
you know, mostly pantry ingredients that you already have. And it's so, so tasty. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And pre-order. And <laughs> pre-order the book. Just po pay, like put that on the bottom of every screen. Out of my wraith.